Hi everyone and welcome to another Wealthy and Wise video. Glad you could join me today. We've had a couple uh, videos now on capitalism and socialism and some of those things and uh, we're going to kind of continue that. I'm trying to weave in some economics and financial concepts that hopefully will help you just in, in your financial lives and your financial planning and all the things you're trying to do with your money as well. And what I want to do in this video is I kind of want to prove to you that everyone wants more than what they currently have. You know, put it another way, is we all kind of want to progress to the next economic level from where we're currently, you know, residing. Now, don't get me wrong. I know there are plenty of people happy and content with the money they're making, with the lifestyle they have, and the situation that they're in. And I get that because it's not all about economics either. You know, I just believe that we're all born with some innate drive to, to try to improve our lives. And this could be economically, but it could also just be becoming a better version of ourselves, getting better at our job, maybe moving up the company ladder, uh, maybe just being a better person, a better friend, a better sibling, a better parent. All those things are important. There are many of us who have, who have talents and we're always practicing and trying to improve. It might be sports, it might be music, dance, whatever. All kinds of interests out there. But progress or getting better is kind of the lifeblood of life. And those that find themselves on this treadmill, maybe have little motivation or desire to keep moving forward, are likely going to find a little more sadness in their life, maybe even a miserable life. Who knows? Because it can be a prison of sorts. Without progress, we're confined to where we're at with little hope of getting out. You know, looking at prison life is similar to life without progress or even the hope of progress. In the financial world, we hear the cry that, you know, the, the rich are, you know, getting richer and it's unfair. What's gone so far lately, and I mentioned this in my last video, that we've got politicians that say that we shouldn't have any billionaires in this country and went so far to say as it's immoral to be a billionaire. Well, it's class envy, class warfare, whatever you want to call it, more than I've ever seen in my lifetime. Because the assumption is that billionaires got their money either on the backs of others or they, they took their wealth uh, from others, that it wasn't earned in their minds. It's this, uh, this false presumption that they feel justified to have some sort of right to strip the wealth of others because of the, the, the illegal ways that they got it. But what I said from the beginning that we all feel like we kind of need to progress is really true. The driving force between socialism and capitalism is pretty much the same. It's getting to the next level, progressing if you will. It's simply the means to get there that are different. I'd say most of the world has a drive to improve their lives. But will capitalism or socialism actually improve their life? You know, socialists call capitalists greedy. But my contention is there's really nothing more greedy than socialism. And let me explain that. Using the premise that we all want to progress and get to the next economic level, so to speak, I think it's innate in the majority of human beings that continually improving and progressing to the next step is kind of built in, as I've said. If not, we'd still be living in caves and grunting to each other. Looking at the bottom line or the bottom economic ladder, so to speak, we've got a person who doesn't really have any education, doesn't have a job, can't afford a place to live, and rarely eats you know, a few meals per day. Well, this is the first level. So the, the first level any of us want to achieve is some kind of income, a roof over our head, and a steady way to eat a few times per day, right? Those are the basics, kind of the, the first things and the first objective of mankind. For centuries in all parts of the world, this has been a day-to-day -day struggle for everyone, except maybe the royal or the ruling class over the peasants, right? 
In many parts of the world, it's still a daily task. Now, on the next rung of the ladder, we have a person who has a place to live and maybe a few meals a day, but now wants a better education to get a better job, maybe a bigger place to live, private transportation like a car, and maybe some additional luxuries in life. And then you can you know you can kind of see how the levels build from there. Being able to afford a, a, a larger family, maybe paying for college for your kids. Maybe you want to start a nonprofit. That seems to be a big deal these days. Maybe you want a larger home. Maybe you want a couple cars or nicer cars. Maybe you want to take a few vacations, uh, have a boat, uh, some other toys. You kind of get the idea. There's a lot of things that you can do once you start moving up the, the ladder, so to speak. I mean, it's there's so many things. You might just want some time to read just to enjoy life. But you get the idea. Think about what your next level is. And it doesn't have to be things per se. It can be mind, body, and even spiritual growth as well. I only use things as kind of a measuring tool that we can identify with and, you know, you kind of see, feel, touch. But if progress and growth mean yoga and meditation, well, that's great. That's what's awesome about America. However you want to grow, you can. Okay, now, as I said from the beginning, I can kind of prove to you that everyone wants more than what they have. In a free market or capitalism, those that want more get involved, take advantage of the system. If they're a laborer, it's possible to work harder, be more efficient, and essentially make yourself more valuable to an employer, which can translate into higher wages. By giving more to their employer, they can move up that ladder, maybe take on more responsibility and leadership, management, whatever that might be. If their current employer doesn't value them and their efforts and their willingness to move up, well, they can move to another company or even start their own business. Then they can build their wealth by saving and investing and, uh, and, and being productive. Then there are those that, who use education and become professionals. Maybe a doctor, a dentist, a lawyer, an engineer, scientist, whatever that might be. They have a desire to help others or to build and to innovate and make life easier for others. They put in hundreds, maybe even thousands of hours into their education and knowledge. A lot of times they have to pay large sums of money for tuition and oftentimes go into debt to pay for their schooling, which is another subject that we need to get to sometime. Anyway, they begin to, you know, to work in their practice or their office and they build their skills, which makes them even more valuable. At some point, they may venture out on their own or advance within the company, office or firm they're working for or even the medical facility and, uh, on their career choice. With some effort, they pay back their school loans, they begin to save and invest and they can build their wealth as well. Then you have the entrepreneurial spirit type of person. You may see a, a need for a product or a service. Then you take the risk, invest your time and your money. You start a business and make a product. You're probably going to have to live lean and mean and maybe even fail a few times. Now, after what might seem years with a lot of work and sacrifice, your product or service is in high demand. The business you built grows and increases your income and your wealth. Now, we aren't all cut from the same cloth. From laborers to entrepreneurs, all paths in life are admirable and can give you a sense of accomplishment and success really at any level. For many, it's not about the money, as I said earlier, but it's the journey, the experience, the growth, the knowledge that they gain. So with capitalism, everyone, no matter what their experience or desire in life, can succeed in their sphere. Some start at a lower rung on the ladder than others. But we can, we've heard countless stories of success in all walks of life and from very humble beginnings. The reality is only you and I can put a ceiling on what we can become. Nothing's really holding us back but our, our desire and our work ethic and things that we really want for ourselves. 
Government politicians would have you believe that they are the answer and life simply isn't fair to you because of your circumstances. They need you to feel like the world is against you. On the other side of the road, We've got socialism that wants to wants the same thing as capitalism. They want to progress in life to the next level as well. However, the difference is how they go about it. A socialist sees the world and the rich and the wealthy and claims it's not fair that they have so much wealth. They never take into account what it took for them to get there. Now, it might have been generations of work before them. Maybe a, a wonderful product that was created that everyone wanted. Maybe they invested wisely or, or climbed the corporate ladder. Who knows how they got there? There's a thousand, maybe a million different ways to get wealth in this country. But rather than either working hard, taking risks, providing a service that others want and need, or even working really hard at their job and proving that they're worth more than their coworkers, learning, growing, educating themselves, and moving up the ladder to better jobs. Socialists tend to look around and say, because he or she has so much and I have so little, we need government to step in and take it from them and give it to me. Socialism is the epitome of greed. But it's much greedier than a capitalist because the capitalist, although he or she may want wealth, he or she's willing to work for it and do what it takes. They're willing to take the risk, uh, put their money and time in, and then they have to serve the community or the country or the world with something that improves their lives or they're likely going to fail. A socialist greed lies in the fact that they don't work for it. They don't take risk. They don't, they don't want to, to uh, put forth the effort. They just want it given to them. They feel like they're entitled to something for nothing. They don't put forth the effort or the work to, to get on the even playing field. They want the government to equal the playing field. A socialist points their finger at the wealthy man or woman and says, they're a billionaire. And that's not fair. Look at how I live. So take their money and give it to me so I can have free college, free health care, and a guaranteed wage. Now, one thing to make perfectly clear, the benefits that the government promises you aren't free. And we've talked about this before. They have to be paid by someone. That someone who's uh, flipping the bill, worked, invested, they were involved in providing a product or a service that people bought and enjoyed and built their wealth. Some might have inherited it. They were born into it. It really doesn't matter. There's still no justification for confiscation. When you give benefits to someone else that they didn't earn, it's literally stealing the productivity of one to give it to another who did not have to work or produce to get it. You know, capitalism is often called the system of greed, but socialism makes the greed of capitalism look like nothing compared to its greed. There's nothing greedier than to envy, covet, and insist that someone give their wealth to someone else so they can have something for free. Socialism gets disguised by using terms such as, it's your right to have health care. It's your right to have an education and so on. However, for you and I to have that so-called right, it has to be taken from others. Remember, for me to get something for nothing, it must be paid by another one of my neighbors who was productive. I believe that's why the founders explicitly said what our rights are, and none of them are the rights being talked about today. Nowhere does it indicate that the government has a right to compel one man or woman to spread his or her wealth amongst the citizens. To understand an even bigger problem with socialism is we have to look at other countries that have tried and failed using that system. Truthfully, the most frightening of all socialism and what it espouses is the fact that it puts tremendous power in the hands of the government. This is why our founders bailed out of Britain in the first place. <laughs> A few who control the purse strings have power beyond measure. 
Inevitably, it ends in poverty for the masses and then eventually a war. And the cleanup process can take decades and decades to put a country back on course if it ever does. So next time you hear a college student who has yet to give anything meaningful to society, scream about the rich and the wealthy and that they should get a free college education, free health care, and a guaranteed paycheck, if nothing else, think of what we're teaching these kids. Is this what we really want? A bunch of dependent kids who will turn into dependent adults, all living off of others' efforts? These are not going to be productive members of society because we're teaching them to be leeches and to scream and throw a tantrum. They're being taught to get their signs out, protest, and demand that they get something for nothing. You've heard the analogy that you get when you get something for free, you don't value it as much as you would had you worked for it and paid for it yourself. Hopefully we all learned those lessons as a kid. Sadly, we have adult politicians who are leading this charge for the kids who are kicking and screaming. But for politicians, it's about amassing the power to say who can be successful, how much you can make, who can't be successful, and limit those that want to reach for the stars. It's a great way to bring down America, for sure. There are some great life lessons in struggling, saving, putting yourself through school, or whatever it is that you want to accomplish in life. Do we really want to take away those lessons? Uh, that can be learned by simply handing them everything they want because they scream the loudest? If you're a parent, are you going to give your child everything they scream for? Socialism is not a teacher. It doesn't educate us. What it does is it teaches us to throw tantrums, and they're habit-forming, debilitating tantrums at that. That's not how we want to raise our kids, right? Yet government is trying to do that to us. Look, if you simply have to live and the government takes care of you, there's no growth in this life. Without some challenges, struggles, and successes, we're not gonna we're gonna be just nothing but a bunch of drones working for the government. And that's not how we're built innately. That's not how this country was built. Sure, everyone is a little different, but we all like that satisfaction of accomplishing something. Socialism takes away that drive and motivation and puts a halt to progress and growth. In turn, that puts a halt to the lifeblood of life, that progress, that um, moving up, so to speak. Socialism is the most debilitating structure and has never worked. It's not going to improve your family, your lifestyle. It's going to just make us all into a bunch of drones. Yet here we are again with ignorant politicians who seem like they can't learn from other countries' mistakes and they're pushing for it again. Well, that's it for this video. Hopefully uh, another conversation starter. You know, I'd love to hear your comments, so please share those with us um, at the bottom of this video. You can, If you have any questions or thoughts or any ideas that you'd like to talk about, please and love those suggestions. So send those to questions at wisemoneytools.com and we'll get back to you just as quick as we can. I hope this has been enjoyable. Um, <laughs> good, bad, and different. We've got a few more. So until next time, make sure you subscribe. Don't miss a video. And uh, I'll talk to you next time. Take care.